76 is all about reclaiming the wasteland and we've got everything you need to know right here. Whether it's learning how to scavenge the wasteland most efficiently or defeat a difficult enemy, here's all the Fallout 76 tips you need to guide you safely through the apocalypse. Remember to stay well fed and well hydrated. One of the biggest new features in Fallout 76 is its thirst and hunger meters. If you make the ill-informed decision to neglect them, you'll find yourself more susceptible to disease as well as lacking in AP. Not good. Hover over the items in the aid section of your inventory and you'll be able to see the percentage of thirst or hunger they refill, but be careful. Consuming drugs makes you thirstier, so if you're fond of dosing up on medex or psycho before a fight, you're going to want more drinks in your inventory than usual. Not all food gives you HP in Fallout 76. A good rule of thumb is that things that have been boiled, canned, cooked or are pre-war will heal you, as well as the obvious stim packs or healing salve. Meat, fruit and vegetables also spoils now, and you can tell how close they are to becoming gross and very likely to disease you by looking at their condition in your inventory. The lower the bar, the sooner it'll be before it's a pile of stinky, icky muck. Make sure you cook it sharpish before it goes off to get the full benefit of eating it. Wasteland food has a chance to carry a disease. When you harvest meat from an animal, if you look at it in your inventory, you'll see that the hunk of flesh has a disease chance percentage. So, if you eat it without cooking it first, just like in real life, you then have the chance of contracting a disease. The older the meat, the more likely it is to infect you with something horrible, and that goes double for spoiled meat. To cure yourself, you'll need to find or craft a disease cure. You get atoms by completing challenges. When you begin Fallout 76, you can complete challenges by doing the smallest things, from collecting wood to killing your first robot, and each one gives you some atoms as a reward. These atoms are the microtransaction currency that's used to buy various cosmetic items in the Fallout 76 shop, so you don't need to spend real money to get those nifty outfits. Loot everything. You'll need resources for crafting, repairing and building, so your junk quickly becomes worth its weight in gold. So pick up everything to start with, then tag items for search when you're in the craft menu to get more specific with what you're looking for. You can scrap all your junk at any type of workbench, which reduces them to their core components and also makes them lighter. Very handy if you find yourself over encumbered. You get items as rewards for completing quests and public events. Gone are the days of just getting XP as a reward for completing quests. In Fallout 76, you get a bunch of items to congratulate you on a job well done. They can be a mix of ammo, aid, caps, resources and plans, which are recipes which let you craft new items. So, if you ever needed even more of an incentive to complete quests or join public events, you've got it. Uncheck any missions you aren't doing. You can encounter missions almost anywhere in Fallout 76, from finding holotapes, notes or even just places in the world. When you do find these missions, they're added as an active mission to your log. That's useful in terms of not missing anything, but it does mean you can end up losing the entire right hand side of the screen. So make sure you dip into the data tab of your Pip-Boy to uncheck anything you're not actively perusing. That way you can focus on one thing at a time and prevent yourself from drowning in things to do. Jumping uses AP. Bear this in mind when you're leaping your way away from a Wendigo in an attempt to stop it hitting you and then find yourself wondering why you can't target it using vats. Definitely not based on a real life experience of mine. Nope, definitely not. Rest in a bed to heal HP. You can't skip time like in previous Fallout games, but it's still worth taking a nap every now and again. You quickly regenerate HP and if you stay in bed for roughly 30 seconds and are well fed and hydrated, you get the well rested perk. But be careful, sleeping bags on the ground can carry disease which, yup, you guessed it, will infect you. Fast travel isn't free. You have to pay to fast travel in Fallout 76. The cost will increase depending on how far away you are from your chosen destination. So early on, when caps are semi-rare, it's worth planning your route across the wasteland to be as efficient and thrifty as possible. However, travelling to friends, Vault 76 and your camp is free. Pick your first perks carefully. Fallout 76 uses perk cards to flesh out your character's special attributes. There's a few options in the opening hours and what's best will likely depend on your playstyle and if you're alone or with friends. 
The Gladiator perk is a good shout either way as it boosts one-handed melee weapon damage and you'll likely be using melee a lot to start off with. If you're alone, then Lone Wanderer is a must as it means you take 10% less damage and gain 10% AP regen if you're on your own. If you're playing with friends, then Inspirational's 5% team XP boost is great, as is Bodyguards, which boosts damage and energy resist, stacking with a number of people on your team. Don't worry too much about exploring at the beginning. Don't worry about exploring everywhere in sight instantly as you'll see most of the opening areas in the early missions. However, there are a few exceptions for the beginning of the game. Once you leave the vault, head right instead of left carrying on down the path to get a gun straight away. And if you find the Wixen Homestead, which is on your way to Flatwoods, kill any Scorch you find there for a chance to loot some armour off their cold, dead, irradiated bodies. You don't have to build a camp straight away. One of the first things you pick up before you leave Vault 76 is your camp, but you really shouldn't try to build the home base of your dreams straight away as it costs a metric ton of resources. Instead, in the early stages of the main quest, you'll come across the Overseer's Camp, which has a weapons and armour workbench, stove and a stash. It's best to rely on that camp for the first handful of hours while you bulk out your resources and prepare for building your own base. Playing instruments gives you an AP regeneration boost. When you're making your way down the path to Flatwoods right at the beginning of the game, look to your left and you'll come across a treehouse filled with instruments. Play one of them for a while and you'll get a boost to your AP regeneration rate that lasts a whole hour. Vats is good for finding nearby enemies. Unlike other Fallout games, Vats doesn't slow down time because, you know, Fallout 76 is an online game. But that doesn't mean that the mode is completely useless. Instead, we recommend using Vats to find enemies lurking nearby when you're sneaking around or hidden in cover, as when it gets dark, it's especially hard to spot things that want to turn you into a bloody red splat on the ground. Bobby pins are super rare. Like Wonder Glue in Fallout 4, to start off with, bobby pins are rare as heck in Fallout 76. You can buy several from the volunteer bot in Flatwoods early on, but otherwise you're going to have a hard time finding them around the wasteland. So be extra careful when picking any locks, as bobby pins are worth their weight in gold. You can leave holotapes playing and get on with stuff. Don't worry about staying stuck in the same place while you're waiting for someone's tape to finish playing. In Fallout 76 you can have the voices of the dead playing in the background while you explore or shoot your way across the wasteland. Don't be afraid to work with strangers. With only 24 people per server, and a map that's about 16 square miles big, it might take you a while to bump into another player. But when you do, try teaming up with them. Seeing if they reciprocate a friendly heart or thumbs up emote is a great way to figure out whether they're more into teamwork than PvP, and then you can invite them to your team from the social menu in the Fallout 76 map. Exploring with a buddy can give you the push you need to explore a digger infested mine or even take on a nuke silo, so don't run the other way when you see a fellow vault dweller. Hacking and lockpicking perk cards are rare. Hacking and lockpicking are two of the simple joys of Fallout games, but like in Fallout 4, you won't be able to even attempt to unlock certain safes, doors or terminals unless you have the right perk. There are three levels of hacking and lockpicking, with everyone starting out at level 0. You'll only get the perks to upgrade your hacking and lockpicking skills at certain levels, so if you see one, grab it sharpish. Chances are you won't come across another one for a while. Always have wood scraps on hand so you can cook meat before it spoils. Meat, fruit and vegetables spoil in Fallout 76, so when you rip a Brahmin steak from its still warm corpse, you'll want to cook it sharpish. All you'll need to cook it at a cooking station is some wood scraps, which you can get from fallen logs or log piles scattered throughout the world. Cooking meat will reduce any chance of contracting a disease from it and increase the HP you'll get from shoving it in your face hole, so it's definitely worth doing. Stock up on aluminium and copper so you can repair your weapons. To mend guns, you'll need to have aluminium or copper on hand depending on which weapon you're fixing, as well as some steel and adhesive. But both copper and aluminium can be hard to come by in the wild, so if you see any aluminium cans or toy rocket ships around, make sure to snap them up and store them in your stash.
Use Vance when you're overwhelmed to take down enemies quickly. In Fallout 76, Vance is a great way to quickly fire at enemies, as you get shown the percentage chance to hit your foe in real time. What that means is that you don't have to bother aiming perfectly, instead hitting that trigger as soon as the percentage climbs up high enough. Do public events for some extra bonus rewards and the chance to make new buddies. Public events will pop up regularly in Appalachia, and they're not only a great chance to earn a handful of caps and some loot, they'll also hook you up with some like-minded players. Chances are that if you play through a public event with a stranger, they'll be amenable for teaming up and adventuring together. That warms up even my cold dead heart. Caps are rare, so spend them wisely. To start off with, caps are pretty rare, with super mutants only having about three caps on them each, when they have caps at all, and the same goes for containers strewn about the wasteland. So, instead of scavenging for caps, try completing quests and public events, which often give you 30 to 90 caps a pop. Then you'll be able to spend freely when you find a vendor bot or a fellow vault dweller who wants to trade. So, those are all the Fallout 76 tips we've come up with so far. Let us know if you've got any more tips in the comments below, click the box and left for more content from us, and don't forget to hit that big button in the middle for more news, reviews, previews and features right here on GamesRadar.